Good morning from Candy, Sri Lanka. Brian Singh from Brian's Table here. I'm just wrapping up here at the post office. I still send postcards. I'm a bit of a romantic and old school guy that way. If you are going to be sending postcards, one thing I learned, it takes, uh, it's about 70 rupees uh, to go international. So take note of that. Today, we're going to do a bit of a, a walkabout of uh, downtown or the city center of Candy. It's a uh, World Heritage Site here, and there, there's a lot of very interesting things to see in this town, so let's get going with our day. Over here we have Candy's railway station, and the railway system here in Sri Lanka is quite well developed, and it's very easy to navigate. If you are a tourist like myself, you do need to consider booking your tickets in advance because there are certain routes that are very well traveled and it's really hard to get a ticket on. Use the website, very handy. The other thing the railway stations are really very handy for are ATMs. They usually have an international ATM and, for the, and one thing that's very important here in Sri Lanka, you need to have cash on you. The economy it is still recovering and it really does help to have cash with you and because drivers take cash, hotels take cash, restaurants take cash, and credit card, not everybody has it all set up. So railway stations, a very handy tip for multiple purposes beyond travel. Ahead of me, Cacophony of Sound is the bus station which is located as always and usually near the train station and these buses go throughout the entire island quite something you have to get used to as a traveler here in Sri Lanka is that they are moving over to higher standards when it comes down to emissions but still there's a lot of exhaust that you're going to inhale Whoa. <laughs> there you go right there <laughs> you're gonna inhale a ton of exhaust when you're traveling around Sri Lanka looks like a market up ahead I'm gonna go and check that out Fresh chicken, so without skin here. Interesting. A lot of chili peppers, dried fish, very much a staple in Sri Lankan cuisine. We have a rice vendor here. Fresh eggs, it's quite something. Lots and lots of rice. Very much a staple here in Sri Lanka. Some sweets over there. Baked goods and sweets. Never short on sweets here in Sri Lanka. And uh, we hit the fishmongers and wherever there is going to be fish, you're going to get a cat or two. And of course some crows. They look like uh, they got a big yellowfin tuna in there, so they're very happy. Gotta admire Sri Lanka that you can still get blackberries here. A lot of deep fried foods, a lot of uh, deep fried wheat. I'm sure it's all delicious, but it is also quite challenging on uh, some travelers' digestive system. But uh, you gotta check out all the fruits here. I do love the cute pineapples, single servings. Those mangoes look fantastic. And this market it is right near the bus uh, terminal as well as the train station. Sri Lanka is blessed. Uh, they do have a number of climactic zones that allow the country to grow a lot of, a large variety of fruit. So you could even get pomegranates here. I am a fan, Brian Lara fan. Yeah, well, Brian Lara grew up uh, five kilometers from me. Really? Yeah. How many hours from uh, here from West Indies? How many hours travel? How many? <laughs> Sri Lanka, you go to London, 
Oh. And London, you go to Bar, uh, you go to Barbados, and then on to Trinidad. It's very far, long way. You have all the like the plants and many plants in Sri Lanka, plant and mangoes. Yep. Grow any apples? Uh, you grow apples here too, right? No, no, no. The, so the mangoes. <laughs> okay. Pineapple. Right, uh, the pomegranate grows. Yeah, pomegranate coming from Egypt, Sri Lanka also grows that white color one, very healthy one. This is the, uh, this one? Yeah, this one is slimy apple, it's especially good for the stomach. Okay. Very fruit. Okay. When you the stomach, you eat, you right. know where grow the stomach pain. Okay. This is the pomegranate coming from Sri Lanka, this grows the Sri Lanka. This is fresh fruit from local one. Right. Very cold one, can right. make the juice. Right. Papaya. Papaya also go all here from right. local. And uh, sausage, no. Sausage also from local. Right. Custard, custard apple also from local. Right. That's good for the joint pains, leg pains. Okay. Like a pumpkin family. Okay. What do you call these here? This one we call the greens for the go-to color from local name. Okay. Many uh, varieties the greens. Right. The that looks like nasturium in... Uh, beans, yep. cabbage, right. brinjol, pumpkin. Basil? This one also has a great different military, yeah. It's also good for the blood. Yeah, that's fine. Grow the blood more. Okay. Grow any power for the body. Right. Can make the right. something. Same, and, one. Uh, same thing? Yeah. Okay. Cool. A lot of fresh coconuts over here. That was a pleasant surprise. I had a nice chat with a gentleman, gave me a little bit of insights into what the name of uh, fruits are and also see what locals are buying here. And it looks like they have a pond where you can chew on some betel nut over here. I'm heading over to the main temple area here. So the city does start to look a little bit different and here's one of the fortified walls around the city. The old city. One thing that you do get used to here when you're traveling in Sri Lanka, like most places, you have to deal with paid toilets or paying toilets. They usually cost about 20 rupees. There's a tendon there. And as you can see, quite nice. And they are very well maintained. There's always one in most uh, urban centers here in Sri Lanka that will do the job quite nicely. So the building that we're walking around is a Buga, Bugambara prison. A block there. Big uh, event going on here. It's got a cool vibe here in Kandy. I'm digging it. One thing if you look off in the distance here, there is a big boot on the hill. But Candy is very hilly. So when you do look at the map and you're trying to decide where to stay, you're still going to be using tuk-tuks. That's the reality here. Because your combination is going to be high up on a hill somewhere and a bit more remote from the city center here. So do keep that in mind if you are visiting the city. A little dirty secret for us travelers is we are heavily dependent upon Google Maps. Here in Sri Lanka, I did get a eSIM plan with unlimited data, which has been a godsend and has been very helpful. But uh, many times I get tuned around and Google Maps is my best friend. Usually quite up to date here in Sri Lanka. So I would highly recommend either you get a local SIM or an eSIM and it will save your ass many times because it's also helpful to knowing where you're traveling with a driver or even a tuk-tuk. It's a good insurance policy and it really has improved my sense of safety as a traveler when I'm in a country where I don't speak the language and I'm not familiar with the culture. And it also allows me more time to listen and observe, which is sometimes the most important thing to do when you are in a strange place. And that strange place becomes very familiar very quickly 
and you start to meet wonderful people and discover the charm of a place. I gotta give Google credit to send me through some of these alleyways. Very good. So my friend uh, Tarek's recommendation, he suggested that we, I go, or we go, to the Lensla Tea Center. So let's check this place out. I, they have a great selection of teas, but I think the most amazing thing is all of these teapots. They're Sri Lankan, everyone in the store. Beautiful. These are porcelain, mm -hmm. and we have the gold plated one and platinum plated one. Wow! And these over here? It's also porcelain, Florida. Okay. So when you're in Candy, make sure you make a stop here at Nansla's Tea Lounge. Have some tea, and check out some teapots. And also pick up some tea if you are traveling home from here. Over there is the Queen's Hotel. Another recommendation of a place to visit. Oh, and this is the uh, Candy Lake, the man-made lake. One thing that was amazing to me up in uh, Sigaria was the water uh, management system. And this is a man-made lake here in Candy that supported this capital. It is quite the feat of engineering. I was told that uh, on evenings here there are hundreds of thousands of birds and you can see the evidence here on the sidewalk as to their presence. That's a perfectly manicured island out there. The logical information center. Oh, that's a water snake. <laughs> no, that's a snake. I think there's a ticket office over here. Here we have the flags of the Candian period, the royal palaces, and the prehistory here. And here are all the kings, this being the third capital. This one came after Sigaria. Right outside the Queen's Bath here, there's just some fish chilling out here. And this is a very cool view of that bath. Different type of fish over here. And to increase the diversity of the pack, we have a turtle in the midst. So to go into the temple, we have to have our legs covered and shoulders covered. And there's Ash. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> I have to figure out where to get tickets for this temple. And I got my ticket. Now we have to take care of our shoes. I'm ready to go into the temple. Ash has been convinced to do a blessing when you're in the temple. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Pavement isn't exactly warm. Okay. And this is the Temple of the Tooth Relic in Kandy, the Sri Galada Malegawa. Interesting motifs as per the temple. What a modern building. All head coverings should be removed. Ah. Oh. 
that smell of incense. Is that where the tooth is housed up there? It's just in the middle of that stand that you walked around. Oh, in that there. Yeah. So you can see you can see inside. Okay. Buddha's tooth is housed in here. So behind that door would be where Buddha's tooth This is the new shrine room. The story of the Truth Relic is revealed in these, the series of paintings and posters throughout this new shrine. It's a very helpful explanation as to how it got here. So when in the temple do make the effort to come over to the new shrine, it's beautiful. And it's also very informative. The museum, which is just above the new shrine, is truly worth going to. It lays out the journey of the tooth and it's quite the Indiana Jones story, but it really does have a long history of when it got moved from India to Sri Lanka and the various sites it's been held and also how the British got involved as well in terms of its uh, acquisition and preservation. It's quite the story. Make sure you go and take the time to go and see that there. Looks like we have a shrine here, which is most probably used for meditation. But if you look at the design, it's very similar to the Independence Monument that I have in an earlier video from Colombo. I think it's wonderful how the Sri Lankans have embraced their architectural heritage and how it is reinforced in the key sites and of their independence as well as part of their cultural identity. The woodwork on this is spectacular. An overview of this complex here. Something. People light incense and they also light a dia. This is part of their puja. interesting way in that room as they use refined coconut oil for the fuel the floor is just a little greasy but uh, I'm sure you could just as I'm gonna do wash this off when I get back to the hotel this is a little shrine here to an elephant called Raja, who is declared a national treasure. I'm, I find it intriguing how 
Sri Lankan Buddhism has taken on some aspects of Hinduism, especially in the form of puja, the diyas, and also the symbolism of the elephant, Ganesha. Let's have a quick little visit into the Museum of World Buddhism. 17 countries where Buddhism is practiced, and just like the temple in Colombo, Sri Lanka does a very good job of respecting the diversity of practices from around the world in the faith of Buddhism. And like the other museum, no video. So I'll join you back after here. I'm going to confess something. After traveling throughout Southeast Asia and India for many years ago, there's a certain point where you do tend to overload on how many Buddhas do you see. This far exceeded my expectations. And I'm also going to emphasize that just traveling in Sri Lanka and how they have their approach to how they exhibit and present Buddhism is very savvy and I appreciate the approach. It was, uh, I learned a lot. I learned how Buddhism was very instrumental to trade, and, but also how it spread and how it became very much ingrained in the life of people within South, uh, Southern Asia, but how it spread out via the Silk Road as well as through uh, shipping trade much earlier than we could ever expect. Uh, the other aspect, and I made note of it, was that how much uh, Buddhism influenced Hinduism in the north of India, while in southern India it was the other way around. Quite fascinating. So many me memories of childhood and field trips, isn't it? <laughs> They are adorable. <laughs> Takes uh, two miles around the, two miles and 46 feet around the lake. And we are about 500 meters above sea level. A little tip of the hat to the colonial past here. Queens Hotel. Always fun crossing the road in any major center in Sri Lanka. So, my friends came here last night and they loved it so much. We're gonna give it a try again. Let's see what this place has in store for us. Thank you. Given that we're going to be eating a lot later, yeah, I'm going to eat this now. I, I may just get order kotu and uh, dessert. The kotu serving is massive. Oh dear. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to get rice and curry, uh, vegetable, and some pulled sambal with it. And I am good. Let's see how that goes. By the music, every time we order, <laughs> they have to go back to the kitchen and check it out. <laughs> This is one of the things I don't mind about just having the camera on because sometimes you just get these weird moments and it's like, what was that about? <laughs> there are certain rules around what goes with what I found out here in Sri Lanka Ash. And they will actively refuse serving it to you. <laughs> He's gone down to check to see if they have the dessert. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm leaving the camera running. One, two, one. No, no. Oh. Oh, well. I, we, yeah, I'm sure we could find it somewhere else. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. We came back specifically for that dessert, but... Oh, well. Shrug emoji. <laughs> so one of the things I learned is don't usually try to order what locals order. <laughs> And I know it's a little ridiculous sometimes because there are other things on the menu, but this is what my vegetable curry and rice looks like. And that vegetable, I am not sure about. Somebody tell me what that is, please. So it tastes. That was very flavorful. Let's see what that thing is that I wasn't sure about. 
Yep. That should uh, vegetable protein. What is that? That should vegetable protein. It's very good. Have a taste. Let's see what this uh, green thing go is. Looks like it has a bit of uh, coconut in it. That's really nice. That's delicious. Mm, Pretty good lunch. So my rice and curry, veggie style, with a bit of that uh, coconut chutney on the side, was just about a thousand rupee. So it's quite a good deal here, very tasty, everything's very fresh, and uh, they run a very tight ship here. So a good recommendation for if you are here in Kandy, to give Midland Deli, there you go, Midland Deli, a go. I'm gonna see you guys back at the hotel. <laughs> okay, bye. bye. <laughs> I'm going to do a little walkabout here in Candy. See if what else is uh, around in town. Give you a sense of what the retail options are. And uh, just to get a sense of what the layout of the city looks like, given this whole area was part of the original city, as well as uh, the street system has been in place for, well, almost uh, 900 years. Quite interesting. There's that uh, Kithul. Some mace. These are all Sri Lankan spices. Looks like Sri Lankan coffee. Nutmeg. I'd like to think this is one of the things that connects me as a, somebody from the Caribbean with Sri Lanka. Interesting to see that. I look forward to seeing some of these trees in real life in a plantation somewhere here in Candy. While well, we've been really entrenched in right next door, here's a, another religious site here for Buddhists, but it's kind of fun to actually see what a Catholic church may look like in the heart of a very Buddhist city. It's so quiet here. And a lovely respite from the noise in the street. Seventy percent of Sri Lanka is Buddhist. The other thirty percent are comprised mainly of uh, about twelve percent Hindu, eight percent Muslim, and the balance being Christian. So the Christians do have a fairly strong presence here, and it's very evident within the school system as well, where they have a lot of Catholic schools scattered throughout the country. Decided to get a, a, a haircut and a beta trim. So, give it a try here in Sri Lanka. Well, that was my haircut at Salon Jandro since 1917. Older my dad, he was born in 1922. But uh, yeah, no, it's always good to get a haircut on the road, keep things fresh, and hopefully I'll look good for the rest of my videos. You can go to many former British colonies around the world and you're gonna find places like this. It's quite, uh, quite something how well they've been preserved. The other thing that uh, is interesting is because it's December, 
at, in Sri Lanka, December is wedding season. I don't want to like to do like the yes theory guys. I'm not going to go and get invited to the wedding. I'm just going to stop in here and maybe pick up some postcards. Thank you. Thank you. That wedding's rocking. I got my postcards. Yeah, I'm old school like that. So with my head freshly shorn and we had a, a little adventure working out things at the post office and going on to the train station to get some money. It was a pretty interesting day. Went around the municipal market, met up uh, with Ash and Leela. We did the uh, temple, the main one here with uh, Buddha's tooth and the tooth relic and uh, had lunch and then a hiccup. So good day here in Candy. I hope you got a little taste of what's here in store for you when you get here. And uh, please, you know, go out here, you know, go exploring. You know, it's a very interesting place to discover a slice of Sri Lanka and understand a lot about the history of how this place came to be and also learn a lot about the history of Buddhism. Very a fascinating history that we in North America and Europe don't necessarily ever get exposed to. So folks, thanks again for watching. I have more in store for you from Sri Lanka. But in the meantime, I'm going to go out there on my adventure and I hope that you get to go out there and taste the world.